Hey everyone, I'm Cameron Owens from ideagarage.io here to talk about a product that we've been playing around with for the last few months. Now, unfortunately, due to the nature of the projects that we're currently working on for our clients, we're not at liberty to say what exactly it is that we're working on and exactly how we're using this uh, Arduino Shield. We can some share some information of why it would be valuable to you. What we have here is a product from the company ABNT Technology and Informatics. Um, so, for those of you guys over at ABNT watching this, I do apologize for mispronouncing the uh, last part of your company name. Um, clearly, I don't speak Italian, and as you, if you can see that, uh, this thing is made in Italy. Now. You may be wondering why do we have an Ethernet shield with two connectors, uh, two Ethernet connectors? Well, that's because this Arduino shield isn't an Ethernet shield, it's an EtherCAT shield. EtherCAT, for those of you that are new to the topic, stands for Ethernet for Control Automation Technology. Now, this isn't going to be an EtherCAT tutorial video. Hopefully we'll have one to follow shortly using Codasys on a Raspberry Pi. We will cover some of the basics of EtherCAT. EtherCAT is used, as the name implies, uh, for industrial automation. Things like manufacturing equipment and even some of the best roller coasters in the world over at Disney. The reason that EtherCAT is so special is that it's a real-time communication protocol. What that means is that communications are, t are deterministic. Uh, you're talking about typical cycle times of one millisecond, depending on uh, the system that you're using. Now, the EtherCAT protocol uh, was originally created by Bekoff. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this, is a this is a document uh, provided by Bekoff introducing the concept of EtherCAT. Now, the best way to think about it, and the way that most people describe EtherCAT, um, is to think of the protocol as a fast-moving train, uh, with the data packet or the message uh, as the, the car on the train itself. And so, on the EtherCAT network, you have this train that's going around and around and around to the devices, just like any subway or, or local train within any city that has, you know, a train for public transit. Now, um, when the packet comes into the device or to the EtherCAT slave, uh, you, you either, you'll take data off of the train, so that's like people coming off of the train, and then you put it back, uh, you put people onto the train, uh, or data packets that'll go to the EtherCAT master. Now, we talked about how this is, uh, this communication protocol is deterministic. That's just like any other train station um, in the world, or at least we would hope, um, you, you have this schedule where the train comes and arrives at certain times and then leaves at certain times. Um, that's, the, that's the same with the EtherCAT protocol. Um, so here we've got a, another image that kind of shows how an EtherCAT network works. So um, you'll have information flowing from the master and then it comes to each of these slaves or nodes uh, comes into the device, this device will find the packet of information that's related to that device or to that node. Um, it'll take its data off and then put whatever data is going to the EtherCAT master onto the train. And then the train goes on to the next stop and uh, the cycle is repeated until um, it hits the last device in the network and then shoots all of that data to the master. Now, you, uh, although we haven't explicitly said that, um, EtherCAT is a master-slave relationship network. Uh, so um, you have one master which is controlling all of the nodes and then you have many slaves on that network. Now the reason that we love uh, this Arduino shield, uh, which it's called the EasyCAT shield, um, is its low cost. Now typically for an EtherCAT controller um, you're talking about uh, a a bare minimum of a thousand dollars. I've seen EtherCAT controllers going all the way up to five thousand um, dollars. So as, as many of you know uh, that have done industrial automation stuff, the equipment can get pricey real fast. Um, however, this guy, uh, which 
um, the shield itself is going to cost you about 60 euros. Um, I can't remember what the conversion is to dollars currently at the moment. Um, and then shipping is 15 euros. Um, so I, I think all of that comes out to, I want to say it's ballpark of like $63 here in the United States. Um, so $63 versus $1,000, um, it's a really low cost solution. Uh, the other reason that we really like this product um, is it uh, has amazing support from the guys over at ab and uh, They've been nothing but fantastic. Um, when we, whenever we have questions about uh, certain types of configurations and everything, uh, we'll send them an email and typically they respond within about 24 hours, uh, which is phenomenal um, when you think about it. Um, and then also, uh, it's just a great product and solution for prototyping and building your own EtherCAT uh, devices. So for those of you that are in the industrial automation space, um, I can't recommend this highly enough. And then if you're looking for something similar but slightly different, uh, ab and does produce a shield for the Raspberry Pi uh, as well as a USB um, to EtherCAT connector and some other things uh, that unfortunately we haven't played with uh, but if it's anything like this product it's probably going to be pretty awesome. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, please leave your feedback below uh, and let us know what we can help you with in your uh, projects in the future. Thanks!